Hello and welcome to this uh, SAS video uh, corresponding to lecture 5 and two-way analysis of variance. This is actually going to be rather quick. Um, the hardest part or the longest part is going to be getting the data in because now we're introducing a new data set, the DFW data set. So let's go ahead and start SAS. Since it is a new data set, we are going to have to name the data set um, data, we'll call it DFW, and we'll go ahead and put the, uh, the data in in terms of course first, then professor, then DFW rate, and then follow that with the data lines. And now we'll just put in the data. There's no easy way of doing it except just to do it. There you go, all typed in. And if you run this, you're going to get an error. But I might as well show you the error now. Here are back on the log, and there's a lot of blue stuff up here. Going all the way to the top. Invalid data for course line six. Okay. Oh, that's right. Course and prof are both characters or strings. They're not numeric. So to specify that they're going to be categorical or factors or, or strings or non-numeric data, we have to follow the course with the dollar sign and follow the prof with the dollar sign. Dollar sign typically means uh, string data. So now let's run this and see what we get. Um, first, we'll check the log. Always check the log. And nope, no errors in there. So we're good to go. So we'll go ahead and look at what we just got outputted. So here's the start 24 data. Uh, 24 lines of data. Um, the mean uh, DFW rate, or the mean, yeah, mean DFW rate is 27.125. Um, standard deviations, variance, um, mean, median, mode, standard deviation, variance range, IQR. Um, if we want to test if the average DFW rate is zero, we just did so here. Quantiles all that sort of stuff. Nothing exciting. This just gives a lot of summary statistics for our dependent variable, which it should. I'm going to get rid of these now. OK, now we're going to use PROCGLM to do our analysis of variance. Remember, it requires the data. DFW is the name of the data set. Um, class follows. This gives the independent variable. That's going to be course and prof. No commas, just space between course and prof. Then the model statement is going to be the dependent variable, an equal sign, and then all of the independent variables. If we stop here and put a semicolon, then we're doing an additive model, where we are pretending that the effect, uh, that professor effect is the same from course to course to course. If we suspect that it isn't, and usually we will suspect that something like this is not, we add in, in, add in the interaction term, which is course times prof. And let's run it. Let's see what we get. We get a lot of cool stuff. So let's go back to the beginning. Previously, when we were doing one-way ANOVA, this, there was only one row here. But since we've got two grouping variables, two independent variables that are classes, we got two. So of course, there are three levels, STAT 2013, 2023, 2053. The professor, there's four levels, Cheney, Forsberg, Michelson, Winchester. Notice that this is in alphabetical order. So is this one. Even though we put the data in Forsberg, Michelson, Cheney, Winchester. 
So SAS automatically puts it into alphabetical order. That's pretty important. Uh, capital N is 24. Since capital N is 24, the degrees of freedom, total degrees of freedom is going to be 23. Model is 11. That's going to be 3 times 4 minus 1. Everything else is going to be the error degrees of freedom. Notice that this model line gives us the the information for the sums of square cells, mean squared cells. So this is for the entire model. Previously, this is all we had. Now, since we've got two independent variables, it this looks at the whole model. There's two tables that follow. There's one that looks at the type 1 sums of squares, and the other that looks at the type 3 sums of squares. The one you should be looking at is the type 3 sums of squares. Although they don't differ here. Do they? No, they don't differ here. But in general, you'll look at the type 3 sums of squares. Because in the type 1 sums of squares, order matters. Um, so if I had put it in prof course and then course prof, these numbers would be different. Sums of, uh, type 3 sums of squares, that won't be the case. Because what you're doing is you're saying, OK, what are the sums of squares remaining after everything else is taken care of? So prof will be what the sums of squares remaining when the course and the course times prof is taken care of. Whereas here, it's we're taking care of course first, and then we're going to take care of prof, and then we're going to take care of course times prof. Actually, it's in the reverse order, but yeah, whatever. So we'll look at the type 3 sums of squares. The interaction is what we always pay attention to first. The p-value for the interaction is less than our usual alpha. Since the interaction is significant, that is what we have to pay attention to. We cannot interpret the course and the prof. Why? Well, here we got the course as the p-value is being greater than alpha. Therefore, we may want to say we can take course out. But hey, we've got course down here with being multiplied by prof. So course actually is statistically significant when done with prof. We have no idea if it's done, if it's statistically significant, if we only do it itself. So if the interaction term is statistically significant, that is all you can interpret. Now here's an interaction plot. Sometimes this is called a profile plot. Um, so the dots are the observations. The lines meet those at the means for each of the, in this case, each of the professor. Each professor has a different line. So if we're looking at this, the DFW rates for this blue person for STAT 20, I'm sorry, that's red. For this red person for STAT 2013 is pretty low compared to everyone else. And that red person, again, pretty low for STAT 2023 DFW rates. But if you look at 2053, that's the highest in terms of this sample. And that corresponds to Forsberg. Whereas for Cheney and Michelson, those colors are about the same. Michelson's actually green. Cheney's blue. So Cheney's going to be the top of these two. But they're pretty close together. So Cheney versus Michelson, there doesn't seem to be much difference in the DFW rates for 2023. Also, it doesn't seem to be much in terms of a difference in the DFW rates for 2023. Sorry, no difference here for 2013. Doesn't appear to be much of a difference for 2023. When we get to 2053, this is Cheney, Cheney's average. This is Michelson's average. So it looks like Michelson's got a much lower DFW rate in stat 2053. We could have an interaction plot where the horizontal axis is the professor, and then the lines are the courses. Easy to change that. It takes place in the class statement. So now we run this, and we get the interaction plot for individual professors listed, and then courses are the lines. So by looking at this, you'd say, OK, looks like I mean, if you want a low DFW rate, 
and I'm not sure that we do want. But if you want a low DFW rate, you want Forsberg to teach the 2013 and 2023 and to stay away from the 2053s. You'll want the uh, you'll want Michelson to teach the 2053 and to stay away from the other two. You want Winchester to teach the 2053 and stay away from the other two. And Cheney, well, the dots are all about the same. Uh, the lines are about in the same position, so it really doesn't seem to matter what you give Cheney. But if we're going to test everything I just said, we're going to have to do this in terms of post hoc testing or in terms of uh, pre planned contrasts. That's not this lecture. This lecture was just looking at two way analysis of variance. And again, I do want to point out a couple things. The model line refers to the sums of square cells, the mean squared cells, etc. And then we use the type 3 table to look at whether whether or not the interaction is statistically significant. And if it is, we're done. If it's not, then we would remove the interaction. It would no longer be course times prof. It would just be course and prof. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care.